Hey, good afternoon. This is Dave Neger, your co-host with Contractor Secret Weapon. You know, I can't tell you how much I love uh, when you introduce yourself as uh, the co-host. I mean, that that just shows me you actually care about me. You you actually I do. think about me. That's awesome. I do, even though your name's first. <laughs> well, that's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens when you have me upload everything. <laughs> well, I you know I I knew that. I don't care. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. You know. No, no. By, by the way, everyone, this is Pete Mitchell, your co-host as well. <laughs> <laughs> on the Contractor Secret Weapon podcast. I love it. I love it. So, hey, um, before we actually get into our topic, the uh, the mailman came today, and I uh, guess what he brought? Petey. A refund from the IRS. I don't get refunds. Are you kidding me? I got one the other day. What? Are you serious? A whole $85 and change. Can't figure out where it came from. Man, my wife goes, "Where did that come from?" I said, "I don't know, but just take it. We'll go out to dinner, you know." So she, so what did you get? I got my Utah concealed carry permit. Utah, yeah, is that for I, for hunting elk with your I, sidearm? I yeah, exactly with for my sidearm. I needed it for um, the state of Washington. So I. I've got an Arizona permit and, of course, the California permit, but uh, neither one of those are good in Washington, and i got to do a bunch of business up in Washington. So Utah is accepted in Washington. So now, How about that? It's literally the only state that the Utah permit gave me that I didn't already have. So That's really weird. Instead of getting a, a Washington state permit, which I don't even know if you can. I don't know how hard it is. The, uh, the Utah uh, they're a communist trick. country, too. That's what I thought, right? So I'm yeah, kind of amazed in that they take anything. Yeah. Yeah. Oregon's really bad. Like Oregon, you gotta like have the you gotta go to the right sheriff and go, Hey, I have a piece of property here and uh it's not my primary residence. Do you mind if I get a permit? So you gotta you gotta buy property based on who the sheriff is. Okay. That's a cool deal. Yeah. I mean not really how I wanna Yeah. I have a, a a friend at church. He, uh, it's a retired New York City cop, and he was he's a uh, an, he was an instructor, so he has a federal permit, and uh, so he gets to bring his wherever he wants. And of course, each airline you know is different as far as. So the last time he went to New Jersey, the uh, TSA called the police and had a, a cop waiting there for him, for him to pick up his gun. Why? Well, because they didn't know he had a federal permit until he showed it to him. So the TSA called the cops? Yeah, called New Jersey. Because New Jersey, you know, it's, you get, you don't even want to, you do not even want to take your baggage. You have them delivered to you. Yeah. Uh, put it on another plane because it's 10 year. It's 10 years. Yeah, that's technically illegal for the TSA to uh, do anything that has to do with state laws. They're only allowed to abide by federal law. Well, you tell them. I know. I know, right? Yeah. New York's yeah. the same way. New York doesn't care. New Jersey clearly yeah. doesn't care. So, I mean, that's the state of the country right there. Yeah. No one cares. Okay. No one cares. So let's all move to Utah. We can buy 100 acres for $5,000 and... Probably I will say this, cheap. Utah, uh, there are parts of it that are really beautiful. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, don't really want to move to Utah. Don't really want to move to Arizona either, but. No. One's there, snow and one's heat, so forget it. I know, right? I'm out. Yeah. But. Uh, That's why I live in Florida and you live in California. None of the above. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, at least. I don't know. I mean, they they all have their pros and their cons. Like, sure. you've got humidity like crazy out there. Yeah. And we are communists out here. So, I mean, it's a little bit of everything. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Either way, you're just never going to find the perfect place. So, let's talk about making money then. Yeah, let's talk about We can do that money. everywhere. That well, that's kind of the beauty of uh Yeah. of being self-employed is you get to create money on demand. So, yeah. 
Yeah. We used to, I used to drive down the road when we were buying and selling houses. I said to my brother, I said, you know, we can, we actually print money. How so? We buy it at X and we sell it at Y, and in between is the money that we print. It's called profit. There you go. Did he like that? Yeah, he got it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so anyway, here's here's something that I wanted to share. This is a, a strategy that I think pretty much all of our listeners could take and utilize. And, uh, and you know, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while and you've heard uh, Dave and I uh, going off about all these different uh, topics, uh, you'll know that I'm a huge believer, as is Dave, in follow-up. Like, follow-up is just the key to getting as much business as you want because almost everybody gives up on their follow-up really really quickly we're gonna start calling this the follow-up show it really it should be right the follow-up I mean, podcast it's kind of like all you really got to do is just follow up with people so answer the phone and follow up here's the uh, yeah, just answer the phone right don't even <laughs> need to follow up most of the time just answer it um so i mentioned uh on last week's episode that uh, i'm part of this group and uh, paid $25,000 a year to be in it. And I got a bunch of really great ideas. So here was one of the ideas that I got out of it that I was like, hey, you know what? This is one that I can implement. This is one that uh, people who listen to this podcast can implement. And the essence of it is, is this, is use multiple mediums to reach your database. So we've already talked about having a database, uh, reaching out to them. We've talked about you know, the uh, Pete secret sauce, go back and listen to that episode um, where you can send them a letter, send them an email, send them a text, send them a sly voicemail. And what this guy was doing, what he was sharing is, let's say he's he really wants to reach out to his list about something specific. So he puts it in an email and sends it out. Now, most people, they look at sending out an email and they're like, hey, it's free or at least it's dirt cheap. And that's how they want to hit their database. So um, he, he will do that piece, right? He'll send them an email, but then he immediately sends them a text message. And his text message will say something along the lines of, hey, I just sent you an email. Go check it out right now because I got a great idea in it that you can take and implement right now in your business. Um, Sweet. Then what he'll do is he then sends a sly voicemail. Hey, I just sent you a text message and an email. Uh, check out that email because I go over a really cool concept that you can take and apply to your business. And then he'll even go so far as sending people a, what I'm going to call a faux support ticket. So if you've ever done a support ticket online, you know how you get that, that automated uh, number at the top, you know, yeah. and, um, and when you get that, you always read it because you're like, well, clearly I filled out a support ticket somewhere. What are they responding to me about? And so he sends out essentially a faux support ticket and it'll say something along the lines of, hey, you know what? Uh, uh, Pete wanted me to reach out to you because he sent you an email that's got a really cool concept in it that he wants you to, to take a look at as soon as you can. So what he's doing is he's not just relying on the email and relying that people are going to see the email. He's then hitting them with all these other uh, mediums so that they will pay attention to the message that he wanted to get across to them. But that's the very first time that he sends something out. And then he'll, of course, do it again and again because he will send more than one email. Right. But, but in, that, them... in that interaction, I think it's pretty cool because he's not being obnoxious. Right. Yeah. Because it's not email after email after email or voice it, or text exactly. after text after text. He's breaking it up. So that it's palatable, and I'll, and then probably by the third one, I better go check that email. Exactly right. I mean, um, think about this in in your contracting business. So if you're a painter or a, a roofer or you know a power washer, whatever it might be, and let's say you want to do, I mean, we're coming up here on the holidays pretty quick. You want to do a Black Friday special. Uh, you could, of course, send out an email to your list, and that's where most people will stop. They'll do a single email if they even do that, right? Um, by the way, you could also do Cyber Monday, right? It doesn't have to be Black Friday. To take advantage of whatever. It could uh, be my grandma's birthday. 
it could be uh, Monday at 2.15 in the afternoon, and I got nothing better to do, so I'm sending you this email. It could be anything, right. like you anything. said. Anything. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, you would immediately turn around and send them a text message. If you don't know how to do that, go over to smsconversations.com. Put a little uh, wind in my pirate sails. That's my uh, my program that I got out there. And you could then send your your database a text message. Hey, I just sent you an email about my Black Friday special. Go check it out because the special ends at midnight. And then, of course, you could also hit them with the sly voicemail. Same thing. Hey, I just sent you a text. just sent you an email. I'm doing a Black Friday special. I've had a lot of people who want to buy gift cards for the holidays, this, that, or the next thing. Whatever you want to use as your excuse, go check out that email right now. And at least you could hit them with those three different mediums. Even if you can't do the, the faux support ticket, that's still three different ways that you hit them. You hit them with an email, a text message, and a sly voicemail. And um, that one thing right there, that one idea is going to generate more business for you because you're drawing attention back to whatever your offer is, back to however you want to get someone's attention. And you can do it right there. Sweet. Yeah. So so that's my idea. And I'm sticking to it. And I think people should do it. All right. Well, how, how many times would you do it? How many times have I done it? No, will you do it? So let's, let's say that that I was going to do it. I sent out my blast of three. three. I sent out my, my, my email, my text, my slide dial. And let's say that I just do like a support ticket and I send it to them email. Yep. Because I have a, you know, I can, I can do that. Um, so I would I say do, there's, there's, there's. Wait a, uh, wait a day or two and say, hey, just a reminder. With the way that I would look at it is I'd basically be asking myself two questions. Number one, am I at capacity? So if okay. I'm at capacity, then I stop. Absolutely. If I'm not at capacity, then the question I ask is, uh, when do I stop going back to the well when the well comes up dry? So as long as I'm getting takers for my offer, I'm going to keep doing it because I'm not at capacity and it's still... Okay it's still coming back. So I'm getting a return on it every time. So I'm not going to quit this until I stop getting a return. When people stop doing whatever action I wanted them to do, uh, you know, buy my uh, offer or, you know, gift certificate, whatever it is, whatever it is I'm trying to get them to do. When it stops pulling, that's when I stop. But well, the then, reason I, I asked is I know a lot of guys will say, I don't want to get slammed. I don't want to get slammed. Well, you're in control of everything. Yeah, because you can just say, I ran out of the special. <laughs> yeah, well, you <laughs> could even put it in your email. Hey, I've only got 10 of these available. First yeah. 10, you know, you get it. And then in your, your text message, uh, I just sent you an email about uh, a special offer. By the way, I'd pick a, an odd number. I probably wouldn't say 10. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got uh, 12 roof cleanings available uh, at you know twenty five percent off or whatever it is. I'm I'm just making that up. I'm not yeah, even saying whatever, you got to yeah anything do you want to do yeah yeah and um, and that way you're you're limiting yourself to to twelve or whatever or and if you get all twelve of them taken and you're like yeah but you know what? I still have some some time I still have some uh, availability hey you know what those twelve sold out lickety split and I've still had people reach back in so we decided to do another five yeah. uh, if you want to get one of those other five do it now. Or just say, I got two more left, three more left. Yeah, you could. Yeah. I, I personally would say, I the reason why I like to expand it is then I'm still holding an integrity that I said there was 12. Yeah, I gave out true. the 12. The 12 are gone. Because what I want them to do is I want them to believe next time I make an offer and I say there's it's, only 12, there's only 12. Gotcha. Makes so sense. that way I don't create this, oh, he'll keep honoring it. He'll keep – I mean, because – how many times do we see that with most stores and they have a special, right? They're like, oh, limited time only. And we're like, yeah, whatever. If I miss it this time, I'll catch it the next time. Because we know it's not really limited. Like, I want them to believe that I'm, if I say something, I mean it. So that way, when I offer it to them again, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll do what I'm telling them to do. They'll, they'll take advantage of my offer. And, and there's, you know, you know, there's some, you know, stores out there. If you, if I bring in a coupon in for somebody else, they'll take it because they want the business. Right. Yeah. So I mean, it, the the floodgates are open. It's really whatever your imagination can make, it'll it can happen. Yeah. And and here's the funny thing is, as the holidays start coming up, 
I know that there's a very large percentage of contractors, and I know it happens in the real estate industry. It happens in every sales industry. Everyone says, Thanksgiving's coming, nobody's buying anything. Christmas is coming, nobody's buying anything. And that's wrong thinking to begin with because I have never slowed down during the holidays. And it's kind of funny because it's not holiday business. You know, it's like I want to get this room painted for the holidays. Or I want, people have actually budgeted stuff for the holidays. Like one Christmas Eve, I walked out of a guy's house with a down payment of five grand for a $15,000 paint job to start the next week. So there's tons of business out there. Just get rid of the mindset that unless you don't want to work, that's a different you know philosophy altogether than just say, oh, well, I don't want to work these two weeks and I'm taking them off. Don't say there's not enough business because there's always a ton of business. Right. Yeah. Totally. And um, in fact, one of the other takeaways I got from this meeting that it's kind of along these lines and I, I don't have the, the notes here in front of me, so I can't remember what book this was from or, or who had said this line, but basically what they said was great businesses are built on mistakes that are well handled. And I thought that was really profound because like, if you want to build client loyalty, we're going to make mistakes in business. Sure. It's just, it, it's going to happen. Things are going to happen. You got staff, things are going to happen. But how we handle those mistakes and that, uh, that, that interaction we have with our clients, that's what defines the company in the eyes of your, your prospect or your client. So like one of the examples, and you made me think of this actually with, with what we were just talking about right here, you know, with someone who's like, hey, I want to have my house painted. Here's five grand down. And it's Christmas Eve and everyone else is like, oh, business doesn't happen at the holidays. Well, it does happen. Yeah. But you all gotta, the time. you got to put yourself in a position for the business to happen. It means you you can't have hung up uh, your business for the year. You got to stay out there and and be doing things. But um, so anyway, one of the guys that, that was in the group, he was talking about his experience with uh, Nordstrom. And he had bought this pair of shoes from Nordstrom 17 years ago. Oh and he'd had them for about a year, and uh, part of the stitching on the side had started to come out. And so he took it into Nordstrom, and he just said, hey, look, you know what? I bought these shoes here, but the stitching's starting to come out. just wondering if you guys can fix it. And the manager was looking at it, and the manager goes, no, this is not acceptable. And he goes, what do you mean it's not acceptable? He goes, look, th this shoe should not have stitching coming out. And he goes, well, look, I've had it for a year. And the guy goes, I don't care. It's still not acceptable. And he went and he got the guy a new pair of shoes and gave it to him. Yeah. And he I goes. I have a friend to, that happened to. Okay. Yeah. And so he's like, yeah. I still shop at Nordstrom because of that yeah. experience. And he goes, I wasn't even going there, you know, thinking I'd get a new pair. He's, I, I literally was like, hey, you know what? I really like these shoes. And the stitching started to come out. I kind of like, you know, can I get it fixed? I mean, but because of that mistake, if you will, and how it was handled, He's a buyer of Nordstrom forever. How many mistakes do we have in our business where we're just not handling it properly? You know, can we come back and say, if it's genuinely a mistake that's on our side, hey, you know what, this should not be this way. I'm sorry my employee did this. It shouldn't be this way. Here's how we're going to make it right for you. And then making it right. Imagine the impact that would have. How many people would they tell? Oh, a lot. Yeah, well, yeah. the you know the the standard is that um that if they really like it they'll take tell three or four or five people if they dislike it if they have a bad taste in their mouth they'll tell 12 yeah however the five are the ones that you want because they're the ones that are going to actually spend money the other 12 you know they're going to maybe maybe not but you know you're going after and i you know my friend owns a roofing company you know he has he doesn't do it anymore, but he has he used to have, you know, little arguments with uh, the kids because they say, you know, that's not our fault. It's their fault. And he said, just go fix it. Yeah. And, he, and they go, what do you mean? But it's going to cost us money. He says, no, no, no. He said, just write it off as marketing. Mm. He said, that will come back positive down right. the road. Yeah. And he said, just make 
the customer happy. And I've seen where he's actually been over backwards and you know to do things to make people happy. But he also does twenty five million dollars a year worth of business. Right. Do you think that has helped him get to that point? Right. Of course. Of course. Yeah. In fact, uh, that was one of the things that uh, um, one of the people in the group mentioned. Uh, they said that their their uh, customer service manager has a list of uh, pre-approved items uh, that they are able to purchase unlimited budget and send to their clients. So if something gets screwed up in their company, the manager already knows, hey, look, you know, I can buy them this over here or those flowers over there or, you know, whatever it is, because they want those mistakes to be well handled. They want when that stuff happens, let's not make this an approval process. Let you nip it in the bud. Let's make them totally happy with, you know, doing business with us so they'll come back. And they'll it tell makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. But too all too often, how many businesses, Dave, you and I are talking to and we're like, they're too cheap. Oh, I don't want to spend the money on that. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Well, that's why you're going to stay where you're at and not grow to where you want to go. Right there. It's your attitude. Yeah, I think we a lot of times we're short-sighted. We just don't think about, really think about the future that much. And that's where it's all at, is in yeah. the future. And, and I don't, I you know, I can I only have to look at myself as, as an example for that. I mean, I, I always do look for the future. But when I really started out in business, I never planned on being in the painting business for 30 years. Mm. <laughs> you know, so I'm wondering if how many other people think that way. Well, I'm not planning on being in this business forever. Uh, but, you know, we are. And we, so we need to make the best of it. I mean, I've made, I've made the best of it. But I'm, when I actually think back about, you know, well, it's not, I, I'm going to get rich somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. No, I, but, I can relate. but you can fact, get rich in the painting business too, so it doesn't matter. I can relate because I look back at the the different careers that I've had over my life, and I spent the most amount of time outside of marketing in the financial planning business. And I look back at what I would say are millions of dollars I left on the table because I wasn't thinking long term. And, you know, all I was thinking is, okay, they want to buy this right now. Great. And I'm done. And I, I kicked myself. Man, yeah. I totally kicked myself. How much money did I leave on the table? It's it's ridiculous. So. Yep, we have a tendency to do that. We don't think long term. And uh, for whatever the reason, you know, whatever the reason, I know as as we get older and we get wiser, we start thinking about why didn't I do this or why didn't I do that? Well, now I do that, and now I do this. <laughs> you know? right. It's all a learning process. Right. Yep. That's it. That's totally it. So anyway, that was the uh, that was the things that that I wanted to share was just uh, using multiple mediums uh, to reach your database. So I mean, especially coming up here on the holidays, take advantage of that. And then when mistakes do happen, just remember, great businesses are built on the backs of mistakes that are well handled. Yeah. How do you handle those mistakes and uh, put those procedures in place and and take care of them? Nip them in the bud, so to speak. Yeah, do whatever it takes. Is, you know, what is, I forget who it was. I was, uh, somebody's book uh, saying, you know, whatever you do, you never lose a customer. Mm. Even if you have to give them their money back. Yeah. Yeah. One of my friends, that's her motto. Her motto is, um, see if I can remember it correctly. It's along the lines of lose the sale, save the customer. Yeah. So much rather lose the sale and save the customer. Get them back on another one. Yep. I'm planning to figure I'm going to be here for a while. So I got another 35 years, 30 years. I don't plan on doing 100, maybe 95, but you know. Well, that's more than me. <laughs> cool all right sounds well, good uh, hopefully you guys got some great stuff out of that and we'll be back uh, next week with another great episode take care Super. everybody